Good morning. Welcome to St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. Again, my name is Deacon Rodolfo. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. Please take a bulletin for details on Holy Week Mass schedules. On Easter Sunday, March 31st, Mass is scheduled as follows. 7 a.m. Sunrise Mass in English, 9 a.m. Indoors, and 9.15 a.m. Mass Outdoors, both in English. 11 a.m. Indoors and 11.15 a.m. Outdoors, both Spanish Masses. 1 p.m. Spanish Mass and 2.30 p.m. in Creole. Please support our gift shop by making generous donations of new religious items that can be sold. All proceeds will benefit our debt reduction. Stop by the gift shop after Mass on Sundays, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. located near the sacristy. Remember that during the regular collection, the first baskets are for the church offering and the second baskets are for that reduction. Thank you for your generosity. Please continue supporting our Catholic appeal. Please take a pledge envelope located in the narthex of the church so that our time together can be one of reverence and praise. We ask that you please silence all your electronic devices so that you may actively participate in the the liturgy. We would like to welcome all those who are here to worship with us for the first time. Please raise your hand so we can welcome you. <clears throat> welcome and thank you for joining us in praising the Lord. I would like to, now I would like to invite those who can walk to God. So those who myself comes over, you will get the same seats. Thank you.
Dick, can you make me wait? Come. Yeah. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with you. Brothers and sisters, it's the beginning of Lent until now. We have prepared our hearts to prepare them for charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our own salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Please raise your palm so that I can pray for you. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Okay. The whole Shit. Oh. You program it to not to stop? So that what it does at all the masses. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, To the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a call teetered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? reply, Send it back here at once. So they went off and found a call teetered at the gate outside of the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put is 
the gospel of the Lord. And now the crowd will go first and go back oh, to your seats. I hope that you remember what me. you said. them to raise money and ask them to please raise your palms all of you raise your palms yeah Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
who has an example of humility for the human race to follow. Cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Gracious, grant that we may hear his lesson of patient suffering. And so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God. Forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me?
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not record equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an abaster, of, abaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, says to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I met it to pass over with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. 
The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the son of man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it known in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And, all, and they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi! And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. 
They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, the testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. Spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows, while Peter was below in the courtyard. One of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cook and the cock crowd, the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowd a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crowds twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. 
Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus' cords, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, led him out to crucify him. They pressed into, the serv into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place, the skull. They gave him wine, drug with, drug with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see which, to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. This, the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked his pants with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn into, in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the young James and Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate, asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. 
he summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, brought, bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Hoses watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, usually on Palm Sunday, I do not preach. You know the reason? Because the passion is too long. But I enjoy, okay, standing in front of you so that you can admire me. <laughs> so, you know, when I look at the passion of Jesus Christ, I always made an examination of conscience. And I'm asking myself, trying, okay, just to discover my true identity, my belief in God. Am I a coward? Should I preach? Oh, I will give you a chance to say the same thing that you said to Jesus. Crucify him. We do not want to hear him today. But okay, so I think I'm brave enough to stand in front of you to say a few words. But my homily will be short. And before I make that deal with you, allow me to tell you. One time, a priest was giving a sermon. And then he got three homilies in his hands. The short one that he has will cost a $1,000. The longest one, which is at least, okay, five or ten minutes, it will be $100. And the one in between will be $50. And the priest said, tell me which one do you want me to deliver today? And then no one answered. You want the short one or you want the long one? The short one will cost $1,000. But the other, okay, that is, okay, just so, so long, they do not cost money at all. So, brothers and sisters, today, I'm going to preach the shortest one. So, even before you leave the church, I will ask the ushers to collect the $1,000. <laughs> okay? So, one thing that I cannot understand in today's gospel, the same crowd who shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Can you imagine there will be the same crowd to say, crucify him, crucify him. So today we need to address ourselves. Where do I stand as followers of Jesus? Where do you stand as followers of Jesus? So, brothers and sisters, the last part of today's gospel that I like the most is just like, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, each and every single one of us has a why. In our own lives. When we are coping with issues in our own life, many times we say, why me? When you are dealing, okay, with suffering in your own life, pain in your own life, why me? I am in church all the Sundays. I made the sacrifice to come here. And I drive, okay, from whatever sign just to come to, to St. Rose of Lima. 
Why me? Always having a problem in my life. And then you see the person who never comes to church, who never believes in God. Everything is going right for this person. And sometimes we have the tendency to say that, okay, just, you know, I won't come to church anymore. Because it seems that our God is a criminal God. Those are the way we treat our God. So, brothers and sisters, you know, you might be dealing with pain in your own lives. Your two knees is driving you crazy. And when you get older, you keep aging. Oh, everything hurts. You touch this, it hurts. You try to bend down, it hurts. And even sometimes when you go to bed, by 4 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> you are up. So you don't want to stay in bed. Everything seems that to turn against you. But brothers and sisters, most of the time, I heard the teenagers, okay, say, okay, just, you, you old. They say that. But you know one thing? You pray for them because they do not know if they're going to reach your age. It's a blessing. So the way we should see it, when they say that, oh, yeah, I'm blessed. And I pray for you so that, okay, you can be all one day, <laughs> okay? So, brothers and sisters, you know, St. Paul says, every circumstance of lives, you know what you need to do? Give glory and praise to God. You are suffering, you are in pain, thanks be to God. So you have two feet, you can still walk. But there are people who have no feet. They are enjoying their lives. So every single day should be a, a thanksgiving to your almighty God for what the Lord has done in your life. So, brothers and sisters, you know, why have you forsaken me? So we're going to see that during the whole Holy Week. And allow me to tell you that temptation is there. And the first place you will encounter temptation in your life is in the church. This person might sit next to you, and then after that, okay, by accident you step on the person's feet, and the person wants to punch you for first thing here, temptation. What about when we come here? Okay, just, you know, the ushers, okay, they are trying to tell you, slide, slide so that, okay, other people can sit. You feel like punching the, the ushers. They are doing their jobs. So we are Christians by our love. The love of Jesus Christ gathers us today. So that the reason to say this is the day the Lord has made for each and every single one of us, we should thank the Lord for that. Because we belong in a family. And I do not have to know, okay, just your backgrounds. But when we are here, we are the same family. We are the body of Christ. We are one body in Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, I would like to finish with that. So, remember that temptation will follow you everywhere. When you go to the supermarket, people will be there. What about, okay, when mass is over, you will take your car to go home. So many reckless drivers on the road. And then you, you know that they made you angry. And sometimes you keep counting fingers. <laughs> you keep counting fingers. You keep telling them, go to hell. We send so many people to hell. So, brothers and sisters, we need to do something. Do it this time. Okay, say, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this finger. <laughs> I'm not going to show that to anyone. Okay? So, be careful. Try. Okay? Just, you know, pray so that, okay, the world doesn't lead you into temptation. Because temptation is all over the place. But, you know, the last Friday, I had a meeting with the deacons. And then we went to eat after the meeting, just preparing, okay, just all the service for the Holy Week and so on. So that the reason you see the church is so beautiful, the decoration team, okay, just made a wonderful job. You see, the, this is the way, Father John, I want it. That's my vision. I want, okay, the palms like an arch so that, okay, just, you know, we can welcome Jesus' entry 
into the temple. And they did a wonderful job. So I thank God for them. And then when I finished with the meeting with the deacons, we went, okay, just to the, to the pantry to eat something. And then there is one of the deacons who keep talking about death. Supposedly, Father Jean died during the consecration. What should we do? You see, the deacon wants me to die <laughs> during consecration. Okay? So, you know, I pray for the deacon so that, okay, the Lord said them. And then... This reminded me of the food that they were serving. And I was asking them what kind of food because it's Friday. I do not eat meat on Friday. And then this reminded me of a priest who went to a dinner one Friday. And then after that, they served goat. They served chickens. And then after that, the priest was so hungry. And then, okay, just take, okay, the goat, put that in his plate, and he started eating. When one of the parishioners says, say, Father, it's Friday. You are eating goats and chickens. And Father said, oh, I didn't know about that. I'm, I was so starving. And then after that, he say, goat and chicken, I baptize your fish. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance to judge the living who proceeds from the father, believe in one, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Gathered at the foot of the cross, we offer our petitions to the one who never abandons us, no matter how difficult our hardships are. For the church, that our celebration of Paschal Tridium may renew and expand the faith of all those whom Jesus came to save. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer for an end to the death penalty in this country as well as the rest of the world and a greater appreciation of the dignity of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the people of the Holy Land, that the peace and goodwill among all faiths and cultures that they long for men for may come to pass. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who will be baptized and received into full communion with the church at the Easter vigil, that they may be strengthened by the one whose strength was displayed through his passion and cross. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in our community who seek a deeper closeness to the Lord, that the liturgies of this holiest of weeks may move their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith and for those celebrating a birthday today, especially all our faithful departed, may they forever praise the Lord in heaven with all the angels and saints let us pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for, our, for all our intentions is spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. And today we have a special intention for our brother, a parishioner who was here and then was taken to the hospital. 
And may the Lord assist him. We pray to the Lord. Lord and today we pray for our music director being here with us, spend some glorious years, okay, serving this community. May the Lord assist her. We pray to the Lord. God of eternal compassion, even when we feel abandoned and forsaken, we know that you are with us. May we know your presence in our suffering as we offer these prayers to you through the one who suffered for us all and became the source of our salvation to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just how to in our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent is offered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so we all, the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we are clear. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this out of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this out of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence ministered to you. Humbly, we pray that for taking out the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all those saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Ah, the same. grant peace in our days, that by the web of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all this rest, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. All the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious again of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
dost bow? Where are they? Yeah, we need three more. Okay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter in my room, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be Precious body, precious blood, here is bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares a feast divine. Bread of love is broken down, cup of love.
Let us pray. Nourish with these secret gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, to Christ our Lord. Amen. So remember to take a bold ten just to see the schedule for the Holy Week. Because Holy Thursday, the Mass will be at 7 p.m., the washing of the feet, okay, plus adoration. And then Good Friday, we have the Station of the Cross at noon. The first service will be at 3 p.m., and the second service will be at 5 p.m. For Easter Vigil, it will be at 8 p.m., okay, Easter Vigil. And then for Sunday, we have the Sunrise Mass at 7 a.m. in the morning in English, and after that, followed by the rest. Next Sunday, we're going to have two Masses, one in the church, one outside. One is at 9 o'clock, one is at 9.15. If you come late, stay outside. <laughs> <laughs> and another one at 11, 11.15. Okay, two Masses at once, okay? So mark your calendar. Because next Saturday, if you come to Mass at 4 p.m., it will be you in the church, not Father John. I won't be here, okay? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Peter. So I would like to thank Elsa and her team for decorating the church for us and make the church so beautiful. Thank you, Elsa.